Hey there, thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys are all well and having a fabulous day. Um, uh, this build is a speed build. Um, it's inspired by uh, the Incredibles 2 movie. Um, so in keeping with that, I've in named the build the Incredible Mansion. Um, it's a limited pack build. Uh, so if you want it to look the same as what I built in the video in your game, uh, the main packs I used were uh, Get Famous, Seasons, Growing Together. Um, they were the main three that I used. Uh, they, they have um, a lot of mid-century um, objects and things available in those packs. So that's why I went with those. Um, I also used the lamp that you'll see later on in the main room is uh, from Decor to the Max kit. Uh, and there is one railing that I used from the Sparte pack because uh, I needed a modern glass fence, but if you don't have that, it shouldn't have too much effect on the on the build if you download it. Um, so the build itself, I was looking at some different designs, kind of trying to come up with what I would do for the next build, and I came across a picture um, of the Incredibles 2 mansion. Um, and I thought it would be really cool to try and build it in The Sims. Um, and yeah, you can see me struggle a lot. Um, and you can't really, you couldn't really replicate the design. So I, it was mainly taking a lot of inspiration um, and coming up with my own thing um, with those limitations of what we've got in the game. As you can see here, I'm going through and fiddling around with roof pieces. This eventually becomes the back wall of the build, um, which is all glass. Um, and obviously we don't have windows for that design, so I had to come up with my own thing. And yeah, it was very tedious, but I think it looks all right in the end. Um, and I'm putting some um, posts in and we make, we have sort of minimal, those pieces underneath uh, the awnings. I try to make them quite minimal. But yeah, that's the basic look you can see there um, with the massive windows. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I came across this um, a picture of the the build, um, and I just really love the like I really like mid century design. Um, and I love the big uh, massive glass windows at the back, like angled and spreading across the whole rear of the building. So you just get this like massive panoramic view. Um, so yeah, I decided to build it in Dolcell Valley, which is from Get Famous, and then yeah, you get this really nice panoramic views of the whole city. Uh, it looks really pretty at night. Um, due to the limitations, this part of the build ends up technically being outside because the game doesn't register it as a room because I built it from roof pieces, um, but it still functions well. Uh, it just the lighting looks a little bit off at times. Um, so yeah, going back to the, the build, uh, the, the original picture that I've seen, so I th thought it was really cool with the big windows and I like the different levels um, that they have in the house. Um, and I was really yeah, inspired by the mid-century look. It's also really cool that, you know, it's a spy house. Um, so I also do a bit of a hidden basement as well. So there's, oh, I forgot to mention also, I did, I used the bowling, the bowling pack. I'll list them all in the description so they're all down there. Um, but yeah, there was some some cool pieces with the, the bowling pack as well. So I used that and there's actually a hidden bowling alley at the bottom. And then the level below that is a little like spy headquarters room, um, which we'll see much later in the video. Um, you might, it might even be in part two because this build took so long. Like I tried to shrink down <laughs> all of the footage I had as, as much as I could, um, but like if I make it too fast for the speed build, then it's really hard to watch. So just a nice balance of seeing what I'm doing and, you know, watching me fiddle around too much with the really finicky pieces, which is, you know, a little bit what I'm doing right now. But I wanted you to see how um, I got the result with these uh, glass panes. Cause that'll be a pain in the butt, but um, I think it, it worked in the end. Um, so yeah, um, you know, I haven't actually seen The Incredibles movie for a really long time, so it was kind of, yeah, a little bit based off memory as well, um, and just what minimal pictures are available online. 
that there was sort of a couple of interior shots and a couple of exterior ones. Um, so it's it's got yeah similar bits and pieces in there. We have a main floor, which is what I'm building now. You can see on that flat part there. There's like a living area and include a kitchen and a dining room on that level. And then as you go up, there's uh, in the end there was four bedrooms. There's for the main bedroom I did like a kid's bedroom a teen's bedroom and a baby's bedroom so or an infant um, and it has everything in there for them to go through from an infant to a toddler to becoming a child like it's got everything they would need so you wouldn't have to change it up too much um, and they've all got really decent sized rooms they all have their own ensuite um, I also put a library in on the top floor, so there's a couple of desks in there. Um, so, you know, your kids can do their homework or you can study there. Yeah. And then we had a little bit of a, managed to get a bit of a pool area on the back deck. There was there's not too much room um, in the end, out in the back entertaining area, but I got it in a pool and a few little spots where they can sit and on the barbecue and a little, another little sitting area. So we got quite a bit in. Um, just ignore these colors that I'm choosing now. I was doing that so I could tell which parts were which because <laughs> once you put them all in together I was getting confused which parts to move them around. Um, so it, it kind of goes through definitely like a, an ugly duckling stage where it's like uh, is this actually going to come together but yeah we need to trust the process. I think it came came together in the end. This is me trying to measure out to make sure that I've got them all the panels the same on both sides um, and in the end I don't know that they're exactly the same but it's just trying to work it out so I knew what space they had and so that the roofs wouldn't match up at the top um, and then just putting in a basic layout for the rooms again they change as well because they were too skinny there so I had to uh, mess around with them a bit um, to get them right um, and then again, this is me just putting textures on the window so that I can see because when you make them glass It's so hard to see where they actually are and whether, whether they're lining up um, But yeah in the end we do choose different colors um, And the, the bikes look much better <laughs> um, I end up going with like a yellow exterior, which Yeah, I don't know. I, I was between that and like a, a dark blue, but I end up going with the yellow the yellow I felt was more the mid-century vibes um, but you guys will have to let me know what you think whether I made the right choice there <laughs> it wouldn't be too hard to change it um, yeah lining these especially these um, parts that are on an angle they were so hard to line up and get them exactly how I wanted them and then I kept running into issues because of the lot size I chose um, and like if I wanted to make the building smaller by this point I'd already you know had everything in the spot I wanted it um, so yeah it was quite fiddly to get the get the roofing right um, and like the, the interior needed to be like big and spacious like because that was kind of the part of the look that I was replicating from the um, inspiration pictures um, if you google um, the Incredibles 2 mansion then it'll come up and I'm going through now and trying to figure out the floor plan a bit more now there's going to be a walkway up here and this is me counting to make sure I was second guessing myself I'm like have I built this so that the middle actually lines up with the middle of the house um, and it was fine I just couldn't count <laughs> uh, but yeah we'll go through and tidy all that up so yeah going through and sorting out now all of the trying to plan that the top the second floor there so from the the front of the build you go upstairs uh, and come into what would usually be like the second or third floor and then you have to go down to get into the main floor uh, this is me mapping out mapping out where I wanted the upper area to be and just trying to figure out um, there were certain parts from the the pictures that I wanted to include so like this main big structure in the middle which kind of looks like a it's kind of a big support um, like a big support room um, I guess it, I didn't actually turn it into any rooms so there's there's space in those in that big pillar if you uh, were running out of space or needed an extra room for something um, but I didn't feel the need we had in the end I had enough for, for everything that I wanted to include 
I'm sitting in the empty. Um, this is one part that I wanted to include, which was the stairs coming from the upper level there to a mid piece and then coming down. So it kind of gives this really big grand entrance down into the, the main area. Um, and I wanted the main living area down there. There's a couple of lounges and things, but it's quite, it's this massive room and I didn't want to fill it with lots of stuff. I wanted that to be the main focal point. So you come in and you look over the balcony and it's just these lounges that look over the, the whole city. Um, and I think it, it does come together quite well in the end. I mean, you would have seen a bit from the little preview at, there at the start. Um, I've had so much, so many issues with The Sims lately. There's a, a lot of parts in this build where there's big jumps because I would lose footage or the game would freeze and I'd have to redo it all. Um, and I went through and I made sure my mods were up to date. Um, but I don't know if it's one of those that's causing it to be glitchy. Usually I don't have this much, that much issue um, unless I'm using the curved walls, which are constantly giving issue. Um, but for this, for some reason, yeah, I had a bit of issue with this one with the, the game kept freezing and yeah, very painful. So it's like just making sure I save a lot and <laughs> don't lose it all. Um, going through down the bottom there now, because I wanted it was going to be such a big area down the bottom i wanted a few levels um so i started building this up so that it would go down but then in the end i had to switch that and have the front piece sort of a little bit higher um the pieces that i was building to try and hide the little sections of where the wall pieces that i've used as windows i wanted to hide those a bit so when i added sections for that i had to try and hide that um but this is sort of the basic, just getting the basic layout down to figure out where things are going to fit and what I can put in. There's me trying to figure out how I can hide. I was going to put some beams in and I realized that it deleted the whole piece. <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of being very creative and to try and bypass the limitations. Um, I wanted this walkway to come across the top there so you can You've actually got access to walk out and see the whole view. I think it comes out pretty well in the end. Um, I'll cut the, the interior colors. I went back and forth through on a lot, quite a bit. So you're going to see, and I wanted to keep a lot of that in the video so that you can sort of see my process and see, you know, I feel like a lot of videos you watch on YouTube, people just seem to know exactly what they want to use and they just go through and I don't know how they do it. My builds take so long because I'm going through and just trialing things and I'll go through and think, oh, that looks really good and change it all. And then I get to another point and I'm like, hmm, it's not working. I need to try something else. So yeah, it definitely goes through a, different, a few different phases with colors and textures, but um, I think it works in the end. I'm happy with what I had in the end. Um, but yeah, I thought, I thought it would be interesting to keep it in, even though it does mean the video is a bit longer. Um, but you can sort of see me process a bit more. Um, there's a lot of this, that rock texture that stays in. And then in the end, there's also sort of yellowy, like plain white yellowy tones, and then some more wooden walls just to um, create a bit of variance. Uh, so I'm going through now and trying to, up in the back corner is going to be the kitchen and dining. So I'm just trying to figure out a way to section it off so that we can lower it down a bit. Um, and at the same time, I'm trying to limit the packs that I used um, so that if you guys do want to download this, then uh, and if you don't have the, all the packs, it's not going to you know, change everything. It should, usually if you don't have a pack, it will automatically change the pieces with something you know, from base game or packs that you have. Um, so it should still work, it just won't look the same. Um, but yeah, I wanted it to to be accessible or more accessible to people because I know not everybody has all the packs. Um, but yeah, I don't even have all of the packs. There's just too many and they're so expensive for like by the time you get them all. Um, yeah, so going through now and just figuring out how I can create that sunken area. Um, I'm trying to make sure I've got enough room down there to fit the kitchen in. The kitchen was also heavily inspired by 
the movie and the pictures, so it's like bright, bright, bright yellow. Um, and yellow is a bit of a theme throughout the house. I mean, it's the exterior, and then it's yellow through there, and there's other bits and pieces that I do yellow as well. Um, but yeah, it's starting to neaten up here at this stage. You can kind of was getting a bit messy there for some, when I was planning it, but you can kind of start to see it now coming together um, and the different pieces. I also wanted it to be built um, into the side of like a mountain, which uh, it's really awesome that The Sims have finally put that, or, you know, put that in for The Sims 4 with the different um, terrain tools. But I just find it really odd that packs since then they haven't utilized it there's nothing that's pre-built on a hill like everything is flat um which is really annoying because i guess it makes it harder to build on for some people um but i really miss that about the sims 3 they had i mean there's, i guess there's a lot we missed from the sims 3 but they had builds where you could actually build things into the side of mountains and then you, you can have the sloped um, terrain and yeah, make it actually more part of it. So anyway, I did my best to make it look somewhat natural, even though it looks a bit weird that there's this chunk of mountain or rocks <laughs> in the middle of this flat thing that the houses are built into. Um, I think it works all right in the end, but yeah, a bit annoying. Um, so going through now and just working on that, that the front exterior part, figuring out how I'm going to with the small amount of space that I'd left um, to fit in the little mountain. Well, now how am I going to fit in stairs so they could actually get up to the top floor where the entrance will be? Um, so it it was a bit squishy, but I pushed it right to the edge of the lot. It's right on the edge, so you're not going to have much wiggle room there if you want to move it around, um, unless you put it on a different lot that's a bit bigger. Um, I could have done that up the hill. There's a bigger lot, but that's where I, I've done a previous build for a hotel and I kind of wanted it like that. It was in the background. So I'm like, I don't want to get rid of that. So I just had to kind of make this lot do and it's, it's still a big lot like um, And it's got so many levels like in within the house. I didn't want it to be too much bigger uh, Here I am just trying to figure out How I'm gonna cover up the gap between when you build a room next to terrain that's raised, it cuts it in and has this big gap in the middle. So I'm like, oh, I need to try and hide it a bit. I hit a lot of it and then, um, and like a lot of these rocks become part of the house, um, sort of forming walls, like they built the walls around it. But then I also left some of it as if they've, you know, dug it out so they could build the house. Um, and tied it up a bit. I think it looks right in the end, but yeah, again, another thing that I was um, fighting with. <laughs> um, a lot of little pieces like this <laughs> that I'm having issues with. Here I am trying to figure out uh, if I took it out too far, it was going to go through the window, so I had to bring it back a bit. Uh, this is me using, I was using the tool mod. I was going to use the tool mod to put in these poles. I had to double them up because they weren't tall enough and I had to resize them a bit so that it would fit because I wanted the angle poles coming off the veranda area to meet the roof and I also wanted to cover up or um, frame in the big windows on the back of the building uh, with the posts so that it looked a bit more structurally sound even though in real life this would not be possible and <laughs> would be ridiculous. Um, in this little section here I wanted to have a bit make it a bit more insidey outsidey so we do have a lot of plants inside um, and then this little fountain area um, again in the inspiration pictures or in the movie they have these they have a lot of ponds and water sections um, on this floor and there's like floors that move back and forth and um, but in the sims it's a bit more difficult you can't build so I was using a lot of platforms. Uh, it won't allow you, allow you then to put fountains on top of that, the in-ground built ones. So I just had to work with what I had. Um, so I thought um, a little area where there's water shooting up and there's pebbles underneath, like you would imagine it would just drain away. And then um, 
pumped back through and shut up again. So I thought, yeah, that works. Um, brings a bit of, bit of life inside. Uh, here we are again trying to figure out where all the stairs will go so that we can get to all the levels. Um, now that I had the main layout sorted, I didn't want everything to be um, exactly um, duplicated on side to side. I wanted there to be differences. Um, so just figuring out how I can fit the stairs on, on that side and make it look a bit different and then how I can fit some stairs on this side as well. Um, so it's quite a big build, so you need, you need multiple sets of stairs so that your sims aren't taking forever to get from top to bottom. Uh, and then now I'm just going through and just popping objects in so that I can figure out what rooms are going to be where and so I can actually remember what rooms I've decided or what. Um, because this build took... In the end I had like six or seven hours of footage and it took me multiple days to finish. And when you're doing that and stepping away and coming back, it's quite easy to forget like what you've planned. Um, so I, yeah, I just pop some objects in so that I can remember, oh yeah, that's right, that was going to be a bedroom. Um, and this is just me figuring out, originally I was going to have separate sides, you could go up either side, but then in the end we change it so that you can walk all the way through and just creates more of a flow um, through the whole build. So yeah, that's me there, just opening it up. Um, creating that section and then yeah, turning that into multiple rooms uh, More poles up there. That's where they're gonna go and then in the end I do turn them with a tool mod I can't remember if I do that on camera if I kept that um, But yeah, we'll, we'll see that eventually um, Figuring out the the main floor. That's where you enter into the building. Uh, that's gonna be the main room And then yeah, every time you want to add like a a veranda or something or move move around it would move the rocks around which is really painful but yeah that's the the main area which is the parent or the parents room um, and they've got a lovely big deck at the front uh, which would have really nice views as well um yeah still going through and just plotting out where i'm going to put everything to try and figure out where all these bathrooms would fit i did because there was kind of some of the sections ended up being a bit skinny and it's like oh, am i going to fit things in here there wasn't room to move it around if I wanted to look. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's our basic layout up to the top there, a couple of bedrooms and the study and some bathrooms. Um, and then I was, we needed access to get from the kitchen area onto the balcony at the back. So I made a bit of a walk through there. So it was a really big build, but it was really fun and I like how it turned out in the end. Um, so it's definitely worth all the, the heartache of <laughs> going through times when it was freezing and I was losing stuff. Um, it was at this point that I decided, oh, we definitely need to have like a hidden basement. Um, which if I had a thought of that before, it would have been easier to put in, but I was, had to fight with it to get the stairs in and move things around. Uh, we have a, a main bathroom down the stairs there, um, which I included a shower in because there is a pool outside, so I guess, you know, if you have people over, then they, you wouldn't want them going up using the en-suites. Um, and then we also needed access from that main area out to the back, so just cutting that up a bit. Um, that's so hard when you're trying to limit packs. Also because so you've got the options where you can filter what is displayed in the build catalogue. You can break it down so it just shoot, it will just show you like base game or per pack. Um, which is great, but then every time you click the eyedropper tool and select something, it cancels that selection. Or if you click out and go back in, you lose your selection. So I, can't, I cannot tell you how many times I was sitting there going through and clicking the packs that I wanted. Um, but you know, worth it in the end. But just one of, another one of those things, that minor things that you think, why why do they not have like a a button to save this as a, a selection that you want to use all the time or something. Um, this is our main entrance area. I was trying to figure out a way to make it quite grand so you come in and you know, I don't want this tiny little entryway and then you come in and it's a massive house so it had to be um, pretty big. <laughs> um, Oh, 
It took me a while to get these little areas right, like where the stairs are, just trying to balance it with um, what room I wanted to use. Um, and then, yeah, now going through and choosing some windows, again, it's quite hard because the selections are quite limited when you're doing a limited base build. Um, just going through now and in the end we just chose some that are one of quite big windows. It's hard when you've got the entire back area is... Um, oh, I just need to adjust my mic. Sorry, I moved my microphone a bit far away. Uh, yeah, having such a grand window in that main living area at the back and then going to the rest of the house, it's like, well, anything I put in here is going to be uh, a bit pipsqueak <laughs> compared to the rest of it. But um, I just put a few different windows in to vary it up a bit. I'm having more issues with these rocks. Again, every time you want to move something, like just adjust something slightly because I've got move objects on and I've used the tool mod. Um, and because it's the sips, it just moves everything back into an awkward spot. Um, going through and wanting, I wanted to choose, have a bit more variance in the textures. Um, so I thought we might do a lighter shade on the main um, structure in the middle. <laughs> I don't know what to call that. <laughs> so I kind of went for a white here and put pieces of white throughout. I can't remember if I kept that. Uh, and then yeah, going through and choosing, this is what I was talking about with like, my process, like some people just seem to know exactly what they want to use, they jump in and they use it, whereas I'm like going through, picking what I want, trying it, and then trying something else, and zooming it, zooming out, like, um, I don't know, I guess sometimes I can jump in and see straight away what I want, but a lot of the time it's going through trial and error and seeing what I like. Um, which, as I said, I left a lot of it in, but I did, yeah, I did cut some of it out because otherwise we would be here all day. Um, this is what I was talking about before, so I wanted to, yeah, change up the, the textures a bit. So some walls, I took the tone of the orange from the pillars and thought we'll carry that through and do some feature walls, and then we can have some main parts of the structure that are uh, the stone, and then the majority of the walls are sort of like a pale yellow, which sort of really fits in with that mid-century vibe. I just had to close my window. I don't know if you guys can hear all the noise, but I live close to a main road and sometimes it can get quite busy out there and there's lots of like trucks going past and it can be quite noisy. Um, yeah, going through now and yeah, this is what I was talking about, like try this color, try that color. And this isn't even the color we end up with. Um, more windows here, trying to get enough light in so that it's funny, like this one massive room which has so much light. Like, like half the house has a massive, massive amount of light and then the rest of the rooms are quite dark because of where the sun is um, in that world. Uh, here I am deciding obviously that it was a bit too wide there. Um, but this is, yeah, the, the main structure is now complete and it's going through and finding um, and tuning the textures and colors and then we get the majority of the build done. Um, so I am going to break this up into two, two parts because it's just too long. So the second part will be doing most of the, the furnishing and how I, yeah, go through and decorate the rooms and finishing it off. Um, yeah, I think there's a few cuts here because it froze and <laughs> I lost everything and had to do it all again or, you know, the Sims doesn't freeze and the recording software freezes and yeah, I'm still getting used to, to, to recording. There's so many bits and pieces that you need to watch and do and line it all up. So anyway, we'll get there. It's a little bit rough, but um, I think I'm doing, doing all right considering I'm still starting. Um, these pillars are so annoying how occasionally when they're on a corner they have to be rotated. You can't have them square on them. Um, I went through and tried a lot of different fences as a little border for those little areas. Um, in the end they were changed to like little tiny half walls which I think worked a lot better. This is me again going around going, oh, just too much white and we need more yellow. <laughs> um, changing it again and 
this is pretty close to what we end up with, but the floor is different and there's not, not as much white. I'm putting a few pillars through along those walls just to break them up a bit because having just one big stark, even though it's, it's a light yellow, it's um, just adding a bit more detail. Um, popping some lights in now. This is just temporary lighting so you can see what's going on. Um, otherwise, it's quite a dark view, guys. Um, a little bit more water at the top there. So try and yeah, keep a balance with all the, the colors we're using. I do use, um, once we get into the furnishing, I do use other colors. It's not just all yellow. Um, there's a bathroom downstairs that's uh, green and then uh, the bedrooms kind of have their own color schemes going on. Uh, but yeah, we'll get more into that in the second part. At this point, the front was the front facade was looking quite boring. Um, my partner came in and he was watching what I was building. He's like, "Oh, that looks so good!" And then I spun around the front. He's like, "Oh, I, I don't like the front." <laughs> um, so we do spend some time and make that look a bit better. Um, but that'll come up shortly. And again, like it was hard because I hadn't left myself much room at the front, so um, there wasn't a lot of option with what I could do. This is well, I was telling you about earlier, has it having issues. Um, I wanted the roof to have a bit of overlap, but then it was running out of room for the lot and it kept cutting off. And this is me trying to make something magic happen that just wasn't going to happen. Um, and then within that, it kind of broke and part of the roof kept going missing. I'm like, what is this doing? Um, I kind of remember what I was trying to do there. I was trying to go back, back so that it was flush with that last floor. No, it just wasn't working. Um, so this is the main color we have for the outside. We stay with that yellow um, and then I break it up a bit with the, the other textures that we've used with the, the stone and the, and the wood, a bit of um, the sliding at the front as well. Um, so again, I took a bit of inspiration from the um, pictures, but you can't build, I couldn't build exactly what was, what they had in the, in the movie. So we just went with just doing what I could um, and coming up with my own sort of theme in the end. Um, yeah, so going through now, I'm doing a bit more of the, the exterior, um, adding some little trims here and there just to make it look a bit more finished. It kind of was, I wish we had more pieces that when, when you have a floor overhanging that you could have curves going like that, but everything in the game, like goes like that. You can't have like if you do roof pieces and stuff. Um, I guess I could kind of do a roof piece like that underneath, but if you look at the levels, how they kind of, they're jutting like that. I don't know if you can see me, I don't know my fingers with the camera. Um, on the edge there, it would have been nice if it was just one big slope. Um, but yeah, I guess yeah, that's, that's just a limitation of the game. Um, yeah, so working a bit on the front now, trying to figure out how our stairs will go. Um, that hill was such a pain in the ass. It was so hard to work with because I tried to landscape it and I was putting um, plants, plants in and trying to cover the whole thing, but the plants in The Sims don't go sideways and cover like a, a hill. They go flat, so they stick in, but then there's gaps and then I got it all looking perfect and then I moved something and I lost all of it or half of it and so I had to do it all again, which was very aggravating. <laughs> um, this build is already up on the gallery if you want to download it. Um, you just If you search for Wobean um, or Incredible Mansion, it'll come up. Uh, it's all finished, so yeah, I thought I'd pop it up. Um, also, like you can't tell when you're building what packs you've used unless you at least save it to like the in-game library. So I was constantly doing that. So I already had it in the library. It was ready to be uploaded. So I thought I'd do that for you guys. Put a link in the description um, so that you can jump on. Um, you can access the gallery outside of the game um, via this um, Sims 4 website. Um, and if you hit download there, next time you go in, it'll be in your game, uh, which is kind of cool. Sometimes if you're you know, not by your computer and you're looking at different things and you don't want to have to remember to come back and download it later, then you can just hit download and it'll be there when you go back. Um, 
And again, yeah, so I, I use limited packs, so hopefully it's more accessible to more people. Um, yeah, struggling a bit with these windows, just trying to make them... Um, it was such a flat wall at the front, so we needed more variants in the... Um, to bring it out a bit, so then, yeah, I added these extra roof pieces. So this part here for the main entrance, and then it was still quite flat. Um, so after that, I also added one to the other side, um, over the the deck from the parents' bedroom. Um, and I think that added quite a bit to it. It makes it so it's just one big flat surface. Um, so thinking of like future builds, um, if there's anything that you guys want to see, I was thinking maybe another uh, one um, video on my channel that's doing relatively well on, you know, compared to the others is my base game build. Um, so I don't know if you want to see more just base game builds. I was thinking maybe I could do some more tutorial type builds um, and showing you, you know, ways to, to decorate and give you a bit of an idea what you can do just in like simple terms um, to expand on your building abilities but yeah let me know if there's anything that you want to see um, if not there's there's plenty of backlog of things that i want to try so um, yeah plenty of plenty of more inspiration there um a little bit cringe but i actually have a diary and every time i think of something that i want to build in the sims i write it down so um, kind of a good idea because it kind of you know I always think of things of, that I want to build or I see something and I want to do and then I you know you forget about it but if you write it down or I write it in my phone and then I add it to my diary um, and then you can build upon it that way um, you know to come with a come up with a, a fully fleshed idea um, so for the rest of this build or for this part we're just going to go through and finish off a bit of the landscaping and we do a little bit of the the landscaping inside it and then yeah split it into two two parts because yeah they're both <laughs> I don't know if there's anybody that's going to sit through all of this but if you have sat this far thank you thanks for watching um, I really appreciate it uh, it certainly helps uh, my channel if you if you do like the video if you give it a thumbs up um, and if you would consider subscribing that also helps my channel and you'll um, be notified when I put out new videos um, so we got a um, it'll pop up when the next part comes out um, but yeah I appreciate that and thank you again to the people that have subscribed um, at the present time we've got 35 subscribers which is pretty cool um, I'd love to know where you guys are all from so uh, also if you want to pop me a comment and let me know where you're watching from that's quite cool as well um, I'm in Australia so if you're in Australia say hi or if you're you know on the other side of the world or I'd love to hear where you're all from uh, yeah so going through now I wanted to pop in some some planters I think that's a good way when you're landscaping to try and um, try and make areas look like they are more defined areas um, so I made a little concrete planter which again would move all of the rocks and I have to put them back um, but it gave it a bit more structure and somewhere that I can uh, vary up the, the garden a bit um, and have different sections uh, especially with this the way the front area is on this like having that slope it needed to be broken up to have different spots um, and I think that this worked quite well yeah, and yeah, fitting it in where I can, of course, again, it's more limitations, you can't have them jutting up right against the, the other foundations, because it just isn't happy with that. Um, I wish I had have done all of this before I did the rocks. I mean, you don't know where the rocks are going to be, so you can't really do that, but it's just so annoying when everything moves. Like, you just spend so much of your time going back and forth trying to get everything into its right spot. Um, at the back here we needed some stairs to get down and because it's on an angle you can't place stairs on an angle um, but this is a really good trick if you use platforms and then um, lower them one step if there's only one step between 
each platform and the sims can walk down them um, and it makes a pretty cool looking staircase as well um, so added that on that side because um, that particular area where you walk out is higher but on the other side is flush with the the, the level that the deck is at um, going through now and so indecisive i'm like oh maybe i do need more rock paneling out here I think maybe I do go with that one, or maybe I go back with the one inside, I can't remember. It was a couple of weeks ago now that I finished this, so I um, just had to do a voiceover, and I thought this time we might do a little face cam, um, so you can see what my awkward expressions. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the first chance I've had to finish that. Yeah, this is me going, oh, is yellow too much? Maybe I should tone it down a bit, but I stuck with the yellow in the end, stuck with my original thought. Um, and I, th I really like it. I think it turned out well, but yeah, again, okay. it's another thing. Let me know what you think. Is the yellow too much? Um, a bit more work on the back area here. So a few more planters just to break up, break up the area, and bring a bit, bring a bit more plant life to the back. Again, this is just using the platform tool, and if you do it at different heights, then it gives you little cascading planters. Um, and I made them big enough so I could put some trees in either side just to frame the build a bit. Um, that's the glass fence that I was talking about. That's one's from, sorry, that I put in just before. That's from Sparte. So if you don't have Sparte, that's that's literally the only thing they use from it. Um, you could just replace it with the base game glass rail, but this it's very limited with, with what they have in the base game for glass rails. It's just the one that has a pole on every section. Um, yeah, it took me a little while to get the, the basement sorted and get the stairs how I wanted them. I put in a little secret entrance with the, the hidden bookcase door. Um, so yeah, only your sims and your, um, whatever friends you want to invite down are going to know about that. Um, I don't know if you have to lock that. I think it comes unlocked, so people probably could just walk straight through and, like, guess some things, but you could click on the door and lock it so only the, the family can get in there. Um, and then this other section I wanted to block out so that it was a bit more structurally sound and that it um, didn't show the st staircase as much yet. So that's the little bookcase door that I was talking about. Every time I wanted to adjust this room so I would lose the pillars on it, that was really annoying. Yet another thing that was quite annoying. Um, on this section here, that's another sort of structural piece coming in um, to hold everything up um, that I actually did utilize as rooms but I wanted to vary it up a bit so I was just trying to put a little inset piece there so that it's not a flat wall uh, and then I put these columns on again sort of inspiration taken from uh, the original pictures oh, it took me so long to get that piece in I'm like I just want a piece there and it wouldn't go on the outside I had to fight with it. I probably should not have left all of that footage in because that's really awkward. <laughs> um, I think I put one there in the end. <laughs> I fought with it for a long time. How awkward is that? It would click. It would go. It would go there for like a split second in the right spot. I was like, I must be putting my mouse in a certain spot where it's going on, and then I'm going over it. So I'm like, we just need to get it in the right spot, and then I'll click it in and I'll get it. But yeah, it took me a while. <laughs> fighting, fighting, fighting with it. Yeah, I really hope, there we go, there we go. I won in the end, thank goodness, because that would have been really embarrassing if I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, just sort of creating a bit of, bit of art there on the wall. I'm trying to figure out a little layout here for how I wanted to have the little living area. Again, that whole section down there is just this little seating area. Um, which you would have seen in the in the opening shots. Um, yeah, this is where we're finishing up the first part. Um, you can see that I've started some of the poles for the windows. Um, I'm pretty happy with I was pretty happy with it at this point. Um, going through and adding some extra gardens down here to fill in a bit of the area. But yeah, so it, um, there were definitely a few points during this build where I was, I was sort of thinking, oh, is this going to work? Is this 
you know, just looking horrible. But at this point, I was like, yeah, no, I'm happy with this. Um, and all the effort I've put in with all the things breaking and <laughs> going back and forth. But yeah, just a little bit more landscaping here and then we're gonna wrap it up. So yeah, you can, as I said, it's available to download on the gallery. Uh, the second part will be out next week. Um, we'll go through and furnish and decorate all the rooms and finish the landscaping at the front. I do not keep all of these things. It was too much. Obviously decided it was important to keep that footage in there just for you guys. Um, <laughs> all right, I will um, sign off here and let you leave you with the last little bit. Um, but yeah, if you've stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope to catch you in part two where we finish it off. Um, and yeah, I love seeing you guys comment. So um, leave me a comment um, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys, have a good day.